Changing colors in Photoshop is relatively straightforward, but the problem is the hue saturation adjustment layer doesn't change the color of blacks. So how can you actually do that? In this tutorial, I'm going to share an easy step-by-step -step process of changing blacks to any color, including white, here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And if you've been following this channel for a while now, you might have seen my previous tutorial all about changing colors in Photoshop, but this tutorial talks about changing colors and not blacks and whites. So the difference here is that blacks and whites are actually a luminance value rather than a hue. They actually don't have any hue value at all. So that's why the hue slider with the hue saturation adjustment layer doesn't work when you try to use it on a black or white color. So in this tutorial, you'll learn an easy workaround for changing the color of blacks using a color fill layer and an exposure adjustment layer. So then that way you can add a hue and adjust the luminance value all together to get that perfect new color that you're looking for. So with that, let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's done. So the first image that we'll work with today is this photo of a car, and we're gonna change the color of this car to something different, maybe a nice red color. Now, let's first identify the problem that we're having. Usually, if I create a hue saturation adjustment layer like so, I could adjust the master tab or one of the individual colors to target that specific area, but in this case, there's obviously no black option here. So just adjusting the master hue, Notice how even when I crank over the hue to a totally different area, the car still remains black, but it's only adjusting the actual colors that are in the photo. So for example, the blue that was in the windshield, the red that was in the background, and some of the blue that was in the cement here. So this is the problem with changing blacks in Photoshop. Now to give you an example of what I mean here, opening a color palette and looking at the saturation option right here, which is S, Notice how at black, it's actually 0% versus if I go up to a color, it starts to add a numerical value in there. So we need to add some kind of color onto our blacks before we can even think about changing the hue. Now, since we can't do that with the hue saturation slider here, what we have to do instead is create a color fill layer and add it onto a selection around the black area of our car. So there are a lot of different ways to select something in Photoshop, and I've talked about this extensively in other tutorials on my channel. However, the problem with blacks is that there is the color black, and then there's also shadows which look like black to Photoshop. So for example, if you try to automatically select all of the black in this car, it's gonna select the wheels, it's gonna select this shadow down here, it might select this background where it's dark. All of those are similar color hues to Photoshop and it's gonna think, okay, this is similar, you're gonna want some of that too, I'll add it in your selection. And then you end up just fighting Photoshop and you have a nightmare of a time trying to actually make a selection. So because of that, whenever you're wanting to edit a black color, it's best to use the pen tool to make a selection around Around the black area. So in this case, I can grab my pen tool by pressing P, and then I can just start to create anchor points around the entire car. Now, if you're new to the pen tool, I suggest checking out my previous tutorial all about how to use the pen tool in Photoshop, plus three other great ways of cutting out images and making selections. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. Now, since this will take me quite a while to go around the entire car, I'm going to skip ahead so you don't have to suffer through the process of actually making this selection. So let's catch up together when the selection is made. So now I've finished making a selection around the car and notice how I have made sure to exclude anything that I don't want to be affected by my color adjustment. So I cut out the wheel wells, I cut out the lights, I cut out the grill, the windows, and all that kind of stuff. So everything that is inside of our selection will now have the color changed. So the first thing that we'll do is add a color fill layer. And with your active selection made after your pen tool adjustment, we'll go up to layer, and then down here to new fill layer and then solid color. I'll just leave it set to color fill one, click OK. And then now you can pick a new color for your car. Now don't worry about finding the perfect color because you can change this really easily later on and I'll show you how in just a minute. But for now, let's just pick a nice red color like this and click OK. So now, as you see, our color fill layer has a layer mask in the shape of the selection that we just created, which isolates it to only the black areas of our car that we wanna change the color of. Now, obviously this doesn't look very good by default. However, we can make it look a little better by changing the layer blending mode. So with our color fill layer selected, we'll go from normal and down here to color. 
and that's going to apply that color onto the black and change the color for us. Now this looks pretty darn good if you ask me, but we can make it look even better with the help of some type of exposure adjustment. Now you could use your curves, but I find that the levels option is a little bit easier for this kind of effect. So creating a new levels adjustment layer, we're going to actually duplicate this layer mask onto our levels so then all of our brightening and contrast adjustments will only affect the red areas of the car. So the easiest way to do that is by holding Alt or Option, clicking on your color fill layer mask and dragging up to the levels, letting go, and now you have a duplicate layer mask. So adjusting the levels here, I can adjust the mid-tones to make that color brighter or darker depending on what you're into. And in this case, I kind of just want to darken it down a little bit. And then you can adjust the highlights as well to change how much that color pops in your photo. So going back and forth between these two sliders, you can really refine the look of your color. Now, if you aren't getting the look that you're wanting with the levels option, you can actually go back and change the color of your color fill layer just by double clicking on the layer thumbnail. It'll open the color picker. And then now I can select a different color like so. Click OK. And then make those new adjustments as needed. So just like that, with two easy adjustments, we've changed the color of a black car into a nice red one with a relatively small amount of effort. So now you know a really easy way of changing the color of black, but what if you want to turn black into white? Well, let's hop into another example and show you how that works. So in this other project, I have a gentleman with a black shirt that we want to turn white. So once again, the easiest way to select this shirt is with the pen tool so you can manually go around the shirt and then you don't have to deal with any of these shadows in the arm that would get thrown off with automatic selections. So I'm gonna once again grab my pen tool, start making my selection, but I'm gonna skip ahead so you don't have to suffer through the process of watching me create this path. So now that I've made a selection with my pen tool, we're gonna to follow a lot of the same steps. With that selection active, we'll go up to layer, down here to new fill layer, solid color, click OK, set that to white, click OK again, and then we'll go down and change it to color. Now notice this time, it doesn't really actually change the color at all, and that's because white is just like black and it doesn't actually have a saturation value. Therefore, it doesn't actually make any difference to the hue. That's why when you're changing black into white, the only thing that really matters is the exposure adjustment. So let's go ahead and add the next step, which is the levels. Adding a levels adjustment layer, holding Alt or Option, clicking on the color fill layer mask, dragging that up to the levels, letting go. Now notice how when I increase the levels, it starts to make that black turn into gray. And then as I increase the highlights, it's going to help turn that gray into white. And so not going too crazy that you lose all of the shadow information, but just keeping it back a little bit like so. And now we're left with a white t-shirt only made with the help of the levels adjustment. So even if I turn off this color fill layer, notice how it doesn't make a single difference. And that's because turning black into white, you're then just adjusting the luminance or brightness value of that color range. And it doesn't matter what the saturation is. So that's why when you add that color fill layer, it didn't actually make any difference at all. So if you're wanting to turn black into white, just remember you only only have to use the levels adjustment and you don't have to deal with the color fill layers. However, if you want to turn black into a color like we did here, then you're going to need that color fill layer to add a different saturation value and give a hue to that black color. Now this process is super simple, but if I'm being honest with you, the hardest part is actually creating the pen tool selection. So if you're not familiar with using this tool to create selections, I highly suggest checking out my previous tutorial sharing the four best ways to cut out images and make selections in Photoshop. You can find that down in the description below. Anyways, if you learned something today and enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.